So today I want to talk about shrubs, which of course are such a major part of our gardens. Uh, now we're familiar with a very wide range of shrubs uh, and we know quite a lot about them, but I want to focus on how shrubs grow, which is something that's surprisingly not that well understood. Um, the vast majority of garden shrubs are amazingly resilient, long-lived plants, but there's a minority which aren't, and I, this is what I want to focus on, uh, the difference between these genuinely long-lived shrubs and those that, that uh, only survive for a few years. And we're going to start off with a bit of a story about this. Uh, Lavatera olbia rosea, which is a member of the mallow family, and it has bright pink flowers all through the summer, and it's really easy to propagate from cutting. So, not surprisingly, uh, when it first appeared uh, around about the 19, sometime in the mid 1980s, I suppose, it became very, very popular very, very quickly. Uh, I remember my father buying one and astonished how easy it was to propagate from cuttings. I think he probably gave all the neighbours one. They sprouted everywhere. I remember a campground that was completely surrounded by them. Uh, I remember seeing one in Gloucestershire that was uh, up to two storeys. They grew really quickly and they flowered for a fan just a wonderfully long time, really pretty much longer than anything else. But after a number of years, it began to become apparent that there was a problem as the lavateras suddenly began dying. And it was really became plain that they never really survived more than five years. I remember we had a huge one in our front garden and I think we got about a day's worth of firewood out of it. So clearly this is one of those shrubs that is not there for the long term. The difference between trees and shrubs of course is that trees have this single stem and branch at height. Uh, whereas shrubs have this much kind of messier habit. It's very difficult really often to see what's going on. Um, but of course we grow them for a very wide number of, of reasons, not just the, the flower or the berries, but primarily because they have this visual mass created by their foliage, which makes them absolutely essential in creating that sense of uh, these, those spatial relations of, of a garden or, or landscape. They're aware of how, we, of how we manage, how we move around space and how we look around space. Um, and of course their flowers and their value for pollinators and their scent this is in a way almost a kind of an added extra and of course uh, many can be clipped to make hedging uh, we often see them as ground cover or landscape amenity planting uh, and the art of, of topia of course is well advanced and much appreciated uh, however, much uh, modern shrub planting is just mindlessly mown into shapes um, which are often uh, strikes me as a complete uh, waste of time and they're not particularly artistic and uh, the intention of these shrub plantings was never in fact for them to be trimmed in the first place. Um, but it, what go, it's what goes on underneath that I really want to focus on today. Uh, that. Uh, one, as well as clipping shrubs, it is also possible for the vast majority of them to cut them right down to the base. And that way we can completely regenerate them because true shrubs, in fact, continually regenerate from the base. Get down on your hands and knees and look at what's going on down at the bottom. Here's a Berberis and we can see uh, a multiplicity of stems and some of which are obviously thicker than others and we can imagine that those are probably that much older and when I mean basal regeneration this is what I mean this continual production of new sh new shoots from the base and we can see it really clearly here with the Berberis in Kew Gardens that we can see from the label was planted in 1936 so it's been there a long time and we've got the older shoots and then at one side we've got these very small, very young shoots. And they're the new ones. And eventually they'll take over from the old ones. The new ones will grow up really straight and strong. Um, and over time the older ones will slow down their growth. They'll get a bit messy. Um, and eventually uh, many gardeners will, will like to cut them out because they just look a bit inferior. Uh, some trees do this as well, notably lime trees. Um, so here we are then, true shrubs, typical shrubs, continually produce new shoots from the base, so they're continually rejuvenating themselves. But 
There are other shrubs, particularly those that we call sub-shrubs, that don't do this. All the new growth is on the outer part of the plant. Hebes are a good example. Uh, they're wonderful things when they're younger, uh, steadily expanding to form this kind of very useful foliage mass that uh, those in the landscape profession particularly love. But this won't go on forever. Lavenders are another good example of a, of a Mediterranean sub-shrub that we love in gardens for all sorts of reasons, one of which is this neat, low, hummocky shape. But over time, they'll lose this. Even with regular pruning, they'll lose it because these are, in, these are genetically programmed to be relatively short-lived plants. Look into the heart of a hebe or a lavender and you see this. A lot of dead stems you, and you don't see any sign of regeneration. No healthy new shoots. So over time, sub-shrubs and other short-lived shrubs look like this. A real old mess. Lots of dead wood, new growth at the top. And if you cut that growth back, they won't regenerate or only very rarely. So you'll effectively kill the plant. So that then is the key distinction between true shrubs that regenerate from the base and those sub-shrubs and short-lived shrubs that have a definite lifespan and which sadly we can't regenerate. So that then is a little bit of a warning. Next time you buy a shrub, have a really good look, try and find an established plant, see what's going on down at the base. So now we're going to look uh, at some examples. So here we are with uh, Solanum rantinetii, which is, you know, in the way it grows, it's a very typical shrub. Um, Mediterranean climate, these lovely blue flowers almost entirely through the year. Now in looking at it, we notice that a lot of it, most of it in fact, is like this. It's covered in flowers, quite small leaves, quite bendy twigs, a um, little bit sort of untidy. But then we turn around and look at the base, we see these stems of very varying sizes. Uh, now this is a big one, quite clearly an old one. Uh, and that goes up to all the nice flowery stuff at the top. But down the bottom, we've got these other much thinner ones. And these look, they look kind of healthier. They look stronger somehow. Uh, hardly any flowers, nearly all nice big green leaves. So these are the replacement shoots. These are the young ones. These are the ones that will eventually grow up and take over from these older ones. So here we have a bay tree with which uh, many of us are very familiar. But notice how uh, the, the top uh, is looking much less healthy somehow than all the fresh, vigorous young growth down at the base, uh, which will eventually take over from the old trunk. OK, so here is one of these younger shoots on the bay tree. See how nice and straight it is and nice, nice healthy foliage. And an even younger one here, probably only two or three years old. So see how, how, how straight and fresh looking that is. So a lot of trees, certainly a lot of deciduous trees, do have a great ability to regenerate. Uh, some do this incredibly vigorously, like the sweet chestnut. Uh, this one here, as we can see, has been uh, cut back at some point, uh, but then it's got this uh, probably about four or five years old new shoot uh, at the side. That's one amongst many, but this looks like it'll take over as a good proper tree in due course.